Okay guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be kicking off where we did, or picking up where we left off last time, um, where we had this video section um, over, well, this scan into the viewport. And now we're just going to implement this um, text overlay um, on the video. And then we're also just going to be implementing this project section as well, where when we get to this section, um, it starts to scroll horizontally. Okay, and we're going to be using like this nice uh, linear interpolation easing function to make it nice and smooth. And as you can see on the screen, this will also work great on mobile devices as well. Um, so yeah, it's obviously responsive, this section. So when we get to um, large viewports, it takes up 25, each project panel takes up 25% of the screen. When we get to medium viewports, um, it takes up uh, half of the screen, each project panel. And then when we get to smaller screens, it takes up 100% of the viewport width. And the um, scrolling is also, um, we have limits set to the scrolling area, so we'll never be able to scroll out of, well, it will always be in proportion to the scroll with the, um, the uh, project panels. So yeah, let's get going. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, welcome back to the second part of our um, mini course. So you'll remember from the last tutorial, we uh, created this kind of hero section here, goes into the about section, and then we have this video that comes into the viewport and scales um, to the full width and height of the viewport on scroll. Okay, so now what I want to do um, is we need to implement this kind of, so going back to the Form Studio website here, you can see they actually have this over, overlay text that comes into the frame as well. And then we're also just going to move on to this project's kind of horizontal scroll section. Um, so yeah, let's get into that now. The first thing I want to do actually though, before we do continue, is just refactor our code a little bit. Um, because um, I was testing this on mobile devices and in order to get like optimal results on mobile as well, we just need to refactor a few things. So if we come back into our HTML, what we're going to have here is, um, so within our main section here, so within the main div, I actually want to create another div with a class of scroll container. So do that now. So we do scroll double underscore container. And this is just going to basically house all of our sections. Okay, so if we now come to the bottom uh, video section here, I'll just paste that div in. Okay, so it's all within that main section. And now what I want to do, if you come to our CSS, um, there's some modifications we need to make here as well because we've been using viewport heights, the VH unit, up to this point and we no longer want to do that. We actually want to change these percentages. And this is because when a user scrolls um, on a mobile device, um, you'll see that we get this kind of, when it, the, the address bar retracts and contracts, um, and it, or expands and contracts rather, um, depending on when the user's scrolling up or down. And we don't want that to happen. So we're just going to basically scroll jack this so that the um, screen size remains constant on mobile devices to make this effect look really good on mobile as well, okay? So let's just um, change our CSS now, I refactor it slightly. So I'm just going to start from the top. So you'll see that we've got the HTML and the body. I'm actually going to merge these for the time being. So we'll say HTML and body, like so. And I'm just going to copy the overscroll behavior. We can copy that above here. And now we can just delete that single body. And then here we can just say, um, I want to give us a width of 100% and a height of 100%, like so. Okay, so all of our line contains will kind of stay the same. What I do want to change though actually is just the height. So here we can just say height of um, 100%, like so. I'll put a width in here as well. So just say a width of 100% to fill the viewport. Um, and then what I also want to say here, so we've got the abs separators, separate of child one, that all looks good. Now, if we come down to the main section here, this is what we need to change as well. So I'm going to change this to be position of fixed, like so, okay? And then we don't want to display this with Flexbox anymore. I'm just going to say top of zero, left of zero, and we want to give this a width of 100% and a height of 100%. And then we can just remove these flex settings here, like so. Now what you'll notice is when we do that, we can no longer scroll. So in order to be able to scroll on this main element, we just say overflow um, scroll. And now you can see we get our scroll bars up here and we can scroll the page. Um, although you will notice now that our video is no longer, um, is no longer actually um, 
changing size or scaling to the viewport. So what we need to do here um, is actually come back to our JavaScript file and instead of using the window this time, we now need to get the main. So what I've done is I've just uh, added this here. So we say const main equals documents dot query selector and we're targeting that main element. And now what we can do is just change the window to be main. So now you should see that works now because we're now scrolling that main element as opposed to the full window. Okay, so we need to make a few more um, CSS alterations here. Um, so after the main, we just next want to target that new scroll container div that we've created. Okay, so I'm going to copy this over, come underneath the main section, we'll just say dot scroll container, and here again I'm just going to position this relative, um, and then we'll just say a width of 100%. Um, give us a height of 100% as well. Okay, and then within our section, next we want to do, so for all of our sections, again, we're going to position these relative, and we'll give these a width of 100%, and next we're going to say left of 50%, and then we want to transform and translate these um, on the x-axis to minus 50%. And this will just center all of our sections now. Okay, so um, on big screens, it will always be centered. Um, and that's why we're doing that. Now, the next thing I want to do here, um, so we've done our section, that's all looking good. Um, if we move on to the hero, we just need to change, remember I said the viewport height units that we're, that we're referencing now. So for the hero, again, yeah, we're just position relative, display flex, column, aligning the items to the center. And again, we're just going to change, we'll take this off and I'm just going to say, we don't need to justify content center anymore. We are just going to change the height to be 100% and then also the width to 100%. And then if we scroll up in our hero container, um, we actually just want to change this as well. So we give this a height, instead of viewport heights, we use 100% like so, and we say a width of 100%. And then we're using that max width. Again, we're displaying flex. This is all looks good here. Flex direction of column, that looks good. And align item center, that's, yeah, that's fine. And then, so we have our hero um, title next, overflow hidden. And I also just want to add something here. We'll say dot hero, double underscore title. And then we just want to target the H1. We want to specify that as overflow hidden as well. Okay, and this will just get that. When we um, apply the reveal effect, the text reveal effect later, um, this H1 element will have that nice reveal effect now. We won't be able to see the actual text underneath of the boundary. Um, and then the hero title header, uh, that all looks good. That's fine. And then in the about section next, um, let's see what we need to do here. Yeah, we're just playing flex, that's fine. Justify content center. Um, let's align the items center as well. Um, and to be honest, I think because we're doing that there, that's fine. We can just say min height. So I'm just going to give this a height. Let's just give this a height of 100%. And that's all looking fine. Um, yeah, that's all good. So now um, we've done that. About text, that's all looking fine. And then we've, now we've got to the video section. Okay, so again, we're just going to change this to 200% now. And then um, what we can next say is so we've got a width. We want to change this sticky to have a height of 50%. Okay, because that will take up half of the um the video section next. Okay, and then for the video, we just want to say so for the actual video section, we'll just say here we want that to be percent as well. 200%. And So yeah, we got the sticky there, position sticky, um, top zero, width of 
Uh, we want the sticky touch to have a height of 50%, sorry. And for the video, uh, we'll give this a width, uh, high, sorry, a height of 100% as well. Um, we'll say top zero, left zero. And what I want to do here is I actually want to change, the, I want to give this video a class. So we'll just say class of, yeah, we've got class of main video. I've added this in here. So make sure you add the class of main video. And then we'll come in here, we'll just change this to dot main video like so. And let's just see where our video is. We need to adjust our sticky. So there's our video. So for the sticky, position sticky, okay. Okay, so let's just change also the class of our, um, we'll change this to a class of video, dot underscore sticky, like so. And then if we yeah, come to here, change that to video sticky. Okay, so for some reason, we need to just make this got a width of 100%, a height of 50%. And then for our video, oh, that should just be height, it's not min height. Okay, so now that's working. And now we get that, that is scaling correctly. So we've just um, refactored this to use percentage as opposed to the viewport height units. And as I say, that'll make it work better on our mobile devices going forward. Okay, so now let's move on. Now the next thing I want to do here is just obviously on the Form Studio site, we get this nice overlay that comes on. So let's create that now. So if we come to our style.index.html, sorry, um, then we go down to our video section here. Um, the first one I'm going to do actually in this video section is we're going to create a div with a class of shim. Okay, and what this is going to be is a basically a see-through div that we're going to place over our video. And this, may, this will allow us to actually scroll smoothly on mobile devices. Um, if you touch this video on a mobile device, it doesn't scroll properly. So we're just going to place a see-through div over the top and this will stop any touch events occurring on the video. I did try it using um, touch event or pointer events none in CSS and touch events none as well and it didn't work. So the only um, solution was to place a transparent div over the top of all of this um, section. And then if we come underneath our video, let's just do our text overlay. So we just say another div of a class of video dot underscore text underscore overlay like so in here we're going to have a h2 we're going to give this a class of um, text the underscore header the underscore left for the first one and this will just create um, contain the word show as you'll see in our form studio we have the show coming in from the left and the case coming in from the right so that's what we're doing there and then we'll just do the same so we'll copy this down change this to right so this will be coming in from the right and here we can just use case. Okay, so you should see there's our text looking good. Now let's start this with some CSS. So if you come down to our video section here and then underneath, let's just um, do that shim div first. So I'm just going to say, um, yeah, we'll come underneath the sticky section because that's where our shim is. So we have the video and then we have this shim. Okay, so we put it here, so it's dot shim and here we're just going to position this absolute and that should be lowercase. And then we'll say top of zero, left zero, width 100%, height 100%. We're going to give this um, a Z index of two to bring it in front of everything else on the screen. So now if we do a background color of red, you should see that, that covers everything and then we can therefore um, scroll 
So that's, that's the early looking good. And sorry, what I want to do actually is I just want to say, um, can we do can you do an overflow wire? I believe you can. Overflow wire, yeah. Scroll. Because that scroll bar was annoying me down there. Okay, cool. So I've just changed that to overflow wire. And then what I want to do now is we can actually just take this off, this shim, we don't need that anymore, this red colour. Okay, so now let's um, adjust this text next. So I'm going to come underneath the main video and we're just going to target that video, done underscore text, done underscore overlay. And here we can just say position, say absolute again, top, uh, we'll say 50%. We'll do um, a height, uh, sorry, a left of 50% as well. You can see that's centered. Now we just need to transform um, and we'll just translate. We'll say minus 50% uh, on the X axis and minus 50% on the Y axis. You can see now that text is nice and centered. Um, we'll give this a width of 100% and then we'll say, um, just we'll, we'll display this with flex. So say display flex and then we can justify the content to be centered like so. So that's nice and centered now. And then let's just do the font size. So we'll say font size. Um, we're gonna use the clamp again. So the smallest we want our text to be is two rem. Otherwise we'll um, make it uh, grow fluidly with the uh, container query uh, unit. So CQI and then 10 rem for the largest. Okay, and then that will grow until we get to 10 rem and then it will stop growing. Like so, you can see it's 10 rem there. Okay, so now uh, let's um, we'll just do an overflow hidden. Okay, so now let's go to JavaScript and animate this. So if we come back here, um, so let's just do the text transformation. Okay, so what we want to do um, in our text transformation is we're just going to say um, we'll just create a variable. We'll say let text trans, and that's going to equal. Um, we're going to use that bottom variable that we um, have had up here. And remember, this is just taking the bottom of the video section. So when we get to the bottom, um, it will give you the the kind of amount of pixels that section is from the bottom of the viewport or the top of the viewport. So what we have to do here is obviously subtract the window dot inner height. So when we get to the when this section gets to the bottom of the viewport and we're subtracting the window dot in a height, this variable will be zero. And therefore we want the transformation to be zero. Um, so it will be in its original position when we get to this point of the screen. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. And then what we can next say is we'll just do we need to just target those um, actual headers. So to do that, let's just grab our class here. So I'm going to say, come back into our app.js. Above the animate video function, I'm just going to say um, const um, header left equals document dot query selector. And we just target that text header left. Name that properly as well. And then we'll do the same for the right. Just change that left to right. And then what we can say here is header left dot style uh, dot transform and then equals do back ticks so for a template literal we do translate x and then we'll just say um, do a template literal here so a dollar sign and curly braces and then we'll do a minus text trans so we're using that trans variable and then we're going to translate this using pixels and then we do the same thing for the right so now if I do right and then we just take out the minus for the transformation so now you'll see when we scroll down the text should appear it comes into the viewport and there you go um, now what we do need to do actually is if we scroll beyond this 
that transformation will continue and the case will just keep moving. The case where we'll go to the left and the show will keep going to the right. So to stop that happening, we just need to take our text trans and we're going to use the ternary operator again here. And we're just going to say equals. And if the text trans is less than zero, then we'll just keep it at zero. Otherwise, we'll just say text trans. We'll keep the original variable that we have made up here. Okay, so that's looking good. So now we get that uh, text reveal come into the viewport. And that's looking good. So now we can move on to the actual project section. So let's do that now. Come back to your index.html. We're going to the section page. I'm going to give this an ID of um, projects, like so. And then um, let's come in here. So it, again, this kind of uses the same kind of concept as our video. It uses a sticky. And then when we get to that certain viewport, um, it, it then starts trans translating this on the x-axis, this, this kind of slider here, this project slider. So let's do that now. So if we um, come back, do a section with an ID of projects, and then we're going to have a project sticky. So I'll just say projects sticky, like so. This will be our sticky div. And then um, we'll have a, a slider container. So we just say dot slider container. And then we'll have a div in here with a class of projects slider. Okay, now before we go any further, I'm going to create a new JavaScript file and this is going to contain all of our projects. So we'll just say projects.js. Okay, well, that's a folder. It should be the file. Projects.js. Now I've already pre-made these, so just to save time, um, I'm just going to copy these over. I'll, I'll show you what the structure looks like. Um, so I have like a, an array of eight projects here. Okay, so each of this array, we say in const projects equals, and it contains individual objects for each project. So each object has a name um, property. And you can see I've just called this first one project one. It's got the type of project. You can like state any kind of types you want in here. I've just said like for this, for this um, tutorial, we're going for a type of web design, graphic design, the type of job that the project is. And then we have these position, um, this position element here or this position key. And what this will do, this will just, you can see here in this project slider, this first project is at the top of the slider. So that's, that would be the start position. You can see this project down here is at the bottom. So this would be like at the, um, yeah, like the, the bottom. Um, and you have the middle ones and that, that's where we've got mid. So yeah, the bottom is the end and then any uh, project, uh, project tiles in the middle will have that mid um, pos. So that's what we're doing there. That's just for the positioning of our projects on the actual slider. And then we have an a, um, image address. So here, I've, uh, image key, sorry. And here I've just sourced some random images from Unsplash and put in their URL. Um, so they're just random abstract images. If I copy that, for example, if we uh, copy this, you can see Unsplash is a really good website to use. But yeah, here I've just sourced some random abstract images from unsplash.com. Okay, so Let's uh, move on. Now what I want to do is I want to dynamically create these projects, okay, and then apply to add them to the page on the page load, okay? So I don't want to be going into our HTML and just put all the markup in here. I want to dynamically create that with JavaScript. So let's create a function in this project's um, JS file, and it's going to be const uh, create projects. And that's going to equal a function. And we're using this um, syntax here because we want to export this function and import it into our app.js file to create this on the page load. So let's do this. So what we're going to do here for this create project is we're going to cycle through each of our projects, okay? So this project's array up here, have this projects. And here we can just say projects dot for each um, project. This will loop through all of our projects in that array. Now, the first thing we want to do is create a panel. 
Okay, so the panel will be, um, if we come to this website here, the form website, let me expand this, you'll see that each project has its own like vertical panel which fills the actual slider. So this is the panel here. So that's what we're going to create first is the panel. So let's do that now. So I'm going to say let panel equal document dot create element. Let's create a div. And then we'll say panel dot class list dot add. Um, and then we want to add uh, two classes, two classes. Okay, so the first one will be project, and then the second class will be when we use a template, this uh, and template this rule here, and we'll just say um, we want to take the position. So we'll say project uh, dot pos. Okay, so that will apply. This will allow the panel to assign the position of the um, the actual project image. Okay, so that's that done. Um, and then the next thing we want to do here is create the image container. So we we'll say let image container equal documents dot create element. Let's create a div. And then this image container dot class name. So we'll add this class single class name and it will just be image dot underscore container like so. Uh, next thing we want to do here is actually create our image. So we we'll say let's image equal document dot create element. Want to create an image, so we just use the image tag, and then we'll just say image dot class list dot add, and we we'll just give this a class. All of these images a class of project double underscore image. And then we just need to set the source of that image. So we can say image dot source src. And remember we had these image attributes here. So here we can just say project. Remember we're looping through each of our projects here. So this, this image will be tacked on to this project variable that we're passing through. And then we can just uh, target the image key like so. And then we want to get the project details next. We say let's project uh, details and what this will be this will be like this kind of div underneath our images which says the name as well as the type of project that the um that it was so we say project details equals document dot create element let's create a div and then um, we can just say uh, project details dot class list uh, dot add and here we just want to add class of project details. The reason we're adding these class lists is just to we're going to be applying the CSS um, so using these class names. Okay um, so then the next thing we need to do here is grab the title and the project type. So say let um, project title equal document um, dot create element And we just want to, to create a paragraph tag here. We just use p tags for the names. Um, and again, I'll just say project title dot inner text this time. That's just going to equal the project. And we're just going to take the name of the project. So we'll say dot name. And then we'll say um, let project type next equal document dot create element. Create the P and then we'll just say project type um, dot in a text equals project dot type. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to actually append our image to the image container. So let's do that now. So we'll say um, image container dot append child image and then we want to say panel. Um, dot append child and we want to append um, the image container as well as the project details like so okay um, and then what we can do here the next thing we want to do is just do document dot query selector 
and here we're just going to target our actual slider so this project slider here come back to our projects JS um, so we'll just yeah, target that project slider and then we can just append child uh, panel like so so now what we can do here is I'm just going to actually come underneath and say export and we can export this create projects function and now if I bring this into our app.js at the top so we can come up to the top of our app.js and just say import um, create projects from projects.js and now under here if I say create projects come over here and if we run that function you can see we do get our projects applied although they don't look very good at the moment we need to obviously scale these down but that does dynamically create our project panels for this slider okay so now let's come to our CSS and style these projects so let's just create this say projects here okay so in our style.css let's first target our project um, section projects and again we're just going to say position relative and I'm going to give this project a height of 200% so this 200% will take up it'll be like basically the same as a well 200 viewport height it's just taking the 100% of the container the parent element which in this case is our main div and it's times that by 2 for 200% so it'll be two viewport heights basically 200 viewport heights um, and then underneath our project section um, we just want to say dot project um, was it projects sticky yeah project sticky let's take this and here we're just going to say position sticky and want this to be top of zero so it sticks at the top of the viewport and then we'll just say width of 100% and a height of um, 50 percent like so okay now let's go for the slider container next and here we are just going to say um, position relative um, and then we can say uh, we give this a width of 100 percent and a height of 100% as well and we'll give this an overflow of hidden okay so now you can't scroll down anymore that's all that's all hidden looking good okay so now let's grab our projects slider so say dot projects slider like so and here we're just going to give this a height of 100% um, and then we'll say display flex and this will just um, basically uh, make our panels appear within the slider appear horizontally with using flex box so we'll say display flex and then we'll specify the width to be min content okay and that will um, expand our project slider to fill to make sure all of the um, the panels are fitted within our actual slider and then um, Again, I'm just going to use overflow hidden to stop any bleed come in, occurring. And then we're just going to say will change transform. And this will just optimize our browser because when we when we scroll, we're going to be translating this slider on the x-axis with our scroll. And as we're using the translate transform here, this will just optimize our browser to handle that transformation, especially on mobile devices. It will just make it nice and smooth. Okay, now next we want to do is target our individual project. So you remember within our projects or create projects function, um, yeah, for our panel, we added this uh, class of project here. So we're just going to target that with our CSS now. So you dot project. And here we can just say position relative. Um, and we're going to give these a width of, um, we'll say 25 viewport widths okay and now you can see you know so that's 25 percent 
on big on like a large screen and you can see that's now yeah basically cut all of our projects into quarters that's looking good now next we want to do here is we'll say um give us a height of 100 percent and then we're going to give these a padding okay so we say padding so for the top we'll say 80 pixel padding and then for the right and left we'll say a 20 pixels and then for um the bottom we'll just say 60 pixels so say 60 pixels here okay and then underneath this we can just say display flex and then we can just say um, flex direction column and that's pretty much it now the next thing I want to do under here is grab our image container and this is what we also dynamically created with our um, JavaScript here, so image container. So now if I just come back to our CSS, we'll say image container, and I want to give these a position of relative, say a width of 100%, and we'll give these an aspect ratio. Okay, so we're going to say aspect ratio here of 16 over nine, so that's a pretty standard aspect ratio and we can just say overflow hidden. Okay, so now you can see that they all have that nice aspect ratio. If we say, for example, you can use whatever aspect ratio you want here. I like the 16, but if you wanted a square, for example, you could just use one and one, and that will just give you nice squares, but here we'll just use the 16.9. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do here is grab our project images. So we say dot project double underscore image and here we'll position these um, relative again. And then we'll just give these a width of 100%. And then that just makes them you know, appear well correct, like the correct aspect ratio. But to make sure it's always the correct aspect ratio, we can just say a height of 100% as well to fill the container, the image container. And then we'll also just say object fit cover and then object position um, center. And then I'm also just going to apply a filter on these images. So we'll just say grayscale uh, filter. We'll say grayscale about 70%. Just to some of these colors, they're pretty vivid. I just want to tone them down for now. We will say 50%. Okay, so that's it. And then finally, what you'll see here is, so with our JavaScript, we obviously had that, we had those positions. You can see our projects, they all have like the positions now. So we have the start, the mid, the end, mid, end. So let's just target those now. So with our dot start, uh, we can just say justify content flex start. And then for the mid, so for the middle, we can say justify content center. That will center our projects for the mids. And then for the end, we can say justify content end. And there you go, that's looking good. Okay, so now the next thing we want to do here is let's um, just do project details next. So we'll say dot project um details again we'll say display flex and then we'll say justify content space between I'm sure if I can see the details actually let's just check okay so my Okay, I don't think we actually added the detail, did we? Oh, yeah, let's do that, sorry. Um, so let's just come under here and we'll just say project details dot append, append and here we can just say project title and project details.
not project detail, sorry, um, project type. Okay. And then panel. Hmm. Okay, and that's just got to be panel dot append as well, not append child because that only create that only appends the first element then. Okay, cool. So that's working now. What we want to do here is let's say uh, project detail justify content space between. Um, Again, we'll give this a width of 100% and we'll just say uh, padding top of one rem, just give it a bit of space. And then we just target the project details P and here we can just say a font size. We'll just go 0.8 rem for now to make it a bit smaller. Okay, so that's looking better. Um, right, so that's pretty much it. Now let's just uh, make this work with JavaScript, okay? So what we want to do now is if we come to our app.js. So this is our video section. So we could just say video. Now let's move on to the project section. So we say projects. Okay, so now in our projects, what we want to do, um, we're actually going to be using um, that lerp function that we introduced or we spoke about earlier or in the first video. Now what this does, this is an easing function. So if I just show you it in our utils, this um, is basically an equation to, to perform some smooth animations. Okay, so what, what it does, let me show you. So if you come to add.js, if I just say, for example, console.log um, lerp, and if we do, for example, zero as the start, so this is the start variable, 10 is the end, and then the time is like a fraction between these two numbers. So if you say 0.1, then obviously 10% of 10 is one. So we should have one logged in our console. Okay, and there it is, there's one. Do the same thing for 0.9, then that would just be obviously 90% is 9. So this is like an easing function we can use to create this nice kind of smooth scrolling effect on this um, on this project section. So to do that, um, we're first just going to create some initial variables. Okay, so we're going to say let project target x. And that's going to equal zero. Otherwise, we're going to say let project um, current x equals zero and then we also just want to create um, an object here and this is just for to make this um, this section responsive on mobile devices so you can see when we get to big screens that it kind of well small screens it kind of goes all really tiny so we want to obviously change that it doesn't look great so we're going to to do that we're going to do this with javascript and a bit of css as well so I'm just going to say let's percentages. That's going to equal an object. And for small screens, um, we want the transformation to stop at 700 viewport widths. Um, for medium screens, we want it to stop at 300 viewport widths. And for large screens, we just want it to stop at 100 viewport widths. And you'll see this, how this, what this does shortly. That's our percentages. And then we also just need to create some limits, okay? So we'll say let uh, limit equal. So this is the limit of our scroll for this section. So it will stop scrolling when it gets to a certain limit. And here we're going to say if the window dot inner width is less than or equal to 600 pixels, then we want it to be the limit to be that percentages dot small, okay? Else we can say here if the window dot inner width is less than or equal to um, 1100 pixels, 
then we'll say percentages dot medium. Else, we'll just say um, percentages dot large. That means we're on a large screen. Okay, so what this will do, and then what we can say here, um, yeah, we want to put this in a function actually. So I'll say function um, set limits. And then we can just put this in here. Yeah, actually we can just move this in here. So yeah, I'll say copy this. Because basically we want this function to be triggered. Um, yeah, we want to add an event listener. So whenever we change our screen size, we want this limit variable to adjust. And so here we can just say, um, window dot add event listener set uh, resize so when we list that for a resize then we'll just say set limits so now if we uh, console dot log um, limit and that should be set limit not limits okay so you'll see now our limit at the moment is 300, okay, because we're on a medium sized screen. If we go to a small screen, so anything below 600 pixels, so if the window is below 600, then the limit will be set to this small, so 700. And they can see, yeah, we get to 600 pixels, it changes to 700. And on a large screen, um, obviously anything above 1100, we get that 100 limit. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. We're just uh, specifying the limit for this um, scrolling project section uh, based on the viewport. Now let's just go to our CSS quickly and just um, make some quick settings um, for, for mobile devices. I'm just going to say here, at media only, um, we'll say screen and uh, max width like so, and at 1,100 pixels, then I just want to basically grab my, well, first thing is grab my paragraph tag and just make the font size a bit smaller. So we'll say 0.8 rem. And then next, I also just want to target my project section. So we we'll say projects. And here, I'm just going to give this a height of 400%. Okay, so make it a bit larger than the initial 200%. And this is just so we can get this, this kind of calculation for our um, horizontal scrolling. And then I want my project, uh, project sticky in here. So say projects sticky um, to have just a height of 25%. Okay, so it takes up the full viewport width. So obviously if we've got, you know, 400%, that's four times the viewport height. So that's why we're only using 25% to take up the full viewport, just one full viewport. And I want my project uh, to have a width of 50 VW. Okay, so it just looks a bit better. It doesn't look so small anymore. So we just change it to the 50 viewport widths on the, um, the medium sized screens. I'm just gonna copy this down for uh, the this, this 600 size screen, so we can say here, I'll take out that P, we don't need that in there. Uh, for the height, we'll say 800% for smaller screens, so it's quite a, a large a large amount. And then we're only making the, um, the projects like a higher height because obviously we, got, we need to account for more scrolling because our projects take up more um, space on the viewport. And then obviously, yeah, so we just change this to 12.5%. And there you go. So, and then for this project, we'll just say a width of, um, and this needs to be 600 pixels here. And here we'll just say a width of um, 100 VW. So now if we go to the smaller screen, You'll see it takes up 100% of the viewport now, and that's looking good. 
Okay, so... Okay, so looking good here. Um, so next thing we want to do is now get the JavaScript going. So let's let's get this let's get this scrolling occurring. So we've got our limit, and now let's just do function animate projects. Okay, so I come underneath here. We'll say function animate projects, and here we can just simply say um, we want to first get an offset. Okay, so we'll say let offset top and that's going to equal and I actually just do want to get my project sticky do we let's create that up here actually let's do this now so I'll just say um const projects sticky equals um document dot query selector and let's just grab that sticky element Like so, put this in our JavaScript. And then we also want to say let projects slider equal. And then let's just get the slider div. So we can grab this project slider here. Okay, so project slider, put that there like so. Um, and then we can make that a const actually, const. Okay, delete that console log, we don't need that. Now, so we're gonna say let offset top. Now, what we need to get here is the, um, the actual offset top of our parent sticky element. So here we can just say uh, project sticky um, dot parent element dot offset top okay so the remember the project sticky is the actual uh, the parent of the project sticky is actual section so here so this will get the offset top compared to our actual main div okay so if we console.log that offset top and then if we just do that animate projects should see. So our actual um, sticky section or parent of our sticky section, project section is 2,679 pixels from the top of the main div. Okay. So that's what we get in there. And then what we need to do is we need to work out the percentage using this. So we can now say let percentage equal, we do some brackets here and we need to grab our main element dot scroll top so that's the amount of pixels we've scrolled on our main element um, minus the offset top okay because we don't want to consider anything before the project section we just want to subtract that and then what we need to do with this is divide that by the window dot inner height and then we need to times this by 100 okay and that will give us a percentage and now what we want to do with this percentage is we're going to say we want to target this, we want to use our alert function now. Um, so I'm just going to say here, um, we can say project um, target x equals that percentage, okay? And then we want to use the alert function. So we're going to say next, the project current x is going to equal, we're going to use the lerp for the easing, and then we can just say here, project current x the end is the project target X, and then the easing we want to use is 10% easing. Okay, and then what we can now say is project slider dot uh, style um, dot transform equals, use backticks here, we're going to say translate 3D. And here we're just going to say minus um, project use a template literal here project current x and here we're just going to use the viewport widths okay and then we'll just say zero 
and then zero for the X and the Z axis. And the reason we're using translate 3D is that just, um, that's an optimized translate. So if it uses the 3D, it sort of dives into the GPU and makes it more smoother. Okay, so let's see what is going on here. So now if we use, I want to create a function called animate. Okay, so let's just do that now. Function animate. And here we can just say animate projects like so. And then we can just say request animation frame animate. And then if we call animate outside, we should now get a, so that's not doing anything for the time being. Let's just console.log. Let's just console.log project slider. Okay, so we are getting that. Okay, yeah, let's just delete that console. That's working now. I had a typo there of an extra bracket. So now you can see when we get to our project section, we are getting that smooth scroll implemented. That's looking good. Now, what we need to do here is I just want to adjust. We need to just um, make this, you can see, we don't want that to be transforming before we get to the top of the, the viewport. So to, to adjust that, what we can say is, um, if we come back up to our function, our animate projects function, um, animate projects, we can just grab our percentage. So let's just grab that now. And we're going to say equals, and if the percentage is less than zero, we'll keep it at zero, okay? Else, if the percentage is greater, and here we're going to specify use our limit, okay? So we'll say limit, um, then we want it to stay at the limit. Else, we'll just say percentage, keep it at the normal percentage. Okay, so now you'll see when we scroll down, it's no longer translating and it won't translate until we get to that section. You can see now it starts translating like so. And then it accounts for limits. Now when we resize our viewport, it always goes to the limit and doesn't translate anymore. And this works on all of the, um, the viewport sizes. Okay, so that's why we had that limit applied just so it's always looking proportionate and scrolls proportionately to the actual content. And there you go, there's our main section implemented. So obviously we've covered a lot in this second section here guys, this second video. We've now got this up and running and this does work great on mobile devices. Um, just to show you, I've got a demo in my screen. You should see it on the screen now. Uh, we don't get that kind of, you know, um, that address bar expanding and um, contracting because uh, we've, we've we you know we're using the viewport heights and we've got this main element this main div in our HTML um, this main element which stops that happening so we, we're actually just scrolling the main element as opposed to the window and yeah it looks really smooth using that alert function obviously you can slow this down as well if you want like a slower easing although I think 10% uh, is the sweet spot but you have full control over that now so for example if we did Point, yeah, 1%, this will go really slowly on the scroll. You can see I've stopped scrolling, but you still get that transformation being applied. But it just gives you the full control of the um, the actual transform. So let's just create that back to, let's put that back to 10%, and there you go. So yeah, I'll leave this video there, this um, episode here, guys. So next, we're going to be working on um, the actual, so we go past the, uh, the project section, and then we get the blog. And we get this nice kind of um, kind of z-index um, transformation applied to our blog posts, and then I think we'll also just tackle this circular animation as well in the next video because that doesn't take too long to implement, and then this uh, final text transformation, and then yeah, these just these reveal animations. So we'll wrap it up in the next video. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Any questions, give me a comment. And yeah, thanks for watching. See ya.